I think that's what dislodged it so much so that it deployed. Ready to go? Yes. Off to the anchorage. The wind will push us out of the slip. So you liked Atlantic City? I thought it was very interesting. It's this weird mixture of garish and over the top. <laughs> and then like poverty and depressed and... Surrounding the casino areas. Yes. And even like in some of the casinos, it just feels very kind of seedy and sad. <laughs> but it was a wonderful place to people watch. There was so much going on. It was kind of stereotypical. You know, there was all this Jersey stuff and these accents, traditional mafioso looking people and very sophisticated looking people all thrown into this big pot of craziness. I very much appreciated it for what it was. Mm. Pull out of here and go to the anchorage. It's okay? You want to check the wind? No, we're fine. It's good? Yeah, let's do it. Where are we headed? We're heading to an anchorage that's just across from the Golden Nugget. I was there back in 2002. It's a really narrow, narrow channel to go through. How do you think the shoaling is in yeah, Sandy? Yeah, that's what I don't know. So, like, we'll take it real slow, and if we run aground, we'll just try to back up and come back here. That is probably one of the most picturesque things I've seen since we've gotten here. It's very quaint, whereas everything else is very garish with a little lighthouse. And then in the background, all of the casinos. Some of these broken docks and things have to do with Sandy. It wasn't that long ago. Well, it's a little brisk. This is actually quite pretty once you get out here. We've got the beach over there and the water. I wonder how many people who go to the gambling casinos actually come out here. I'm a stranger in a strange land. <laughs> you can see all of the current going past the buoy over there. So we are going from over there across this little expanse of water to over there. You're right, that is a row. In this current, I don't know if, if we could do that. Sure, you could do it. You can row. I didn't say I could My fat row. ass in the stern. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the depth, please. Watching the depth. So we're going into this place. But we don't know if the shoaling is like since Sandy, so. We have 33 feet of depth at the moment. Sixteen, fifteen, thirteen, eleven, nine. Going down quickly. Holding at five. Four. Two nine. Three two. One point five. One three. One two. One. Gotta go back out. This did not work for us. It's a shame this is really beautiful over here. Hey little guy. Thank god we didn't get stuck in there. Yeah, that would have not been fun. That bridge says it's 60 feet. So we should fit under it. Yeah. I saw something that looked a little promising in terms of depth on the other side. Do 
worth just going in to check it out. Okay. I'll God, I hate them. bridges. Yeah, they're always scary. But it says over there, 60, at least 62 feet. We're definitely less than 62 feet. Are you going to fit there? Yep. Oh my God. The place where the depth looked reasonable for anchoring is right where I see all those buoys out there. They're for like tugs or big boats or something like that. Yeah, that looks like a pretty sturdy thing to tie up to, eh? I think right here. I think it's beautiful. it by hand. I think all the salt water that came in through the uh, chain locker probably soaked the windlass. Okay, so Well, it's beautiful Yay. on this side. So here we are in the Anchorage in uh, Atlantic City. Not really an Anchorage, but we anchored in 20 feet. There's a lot of current, I'd say like five knots here. And in the process, we discovered that the windlass is not working. Yeah, go ahead and click it. Hmm. Thank you. So there's a clicking sound coming from the circuit breaker panel when Mo presses on the windlass button on the deck. The windlass fuse is operational, physically. I hope we can fix this today so that we won't have to raise the anchor by hand. 75 pound anchor by hand would not be a lot of fun. It's great to hang out with Adam. He was such an awesome crew. We had some really rough weather. And uh, he was a trooper, man. <laughs> Maybe some of that has to do with his military training in the army. At no point was he, like, distressed or even phased. He was always up for whatever had to be done. We really got to know him over just, oh, ten days. Wow, it's already been ten days. Feels like just yesterday. Hmm. Well, now let's see what we can do with this windlass. I turned the windlass on and then I press a little foot button and nothing happened. You know, I wanted to raise the chain up just a little bit and it didn't come up. We have just spent the past four hours trying to figure out what the heck happened. And so here's a little story. Number one, we were just in a storm. During that time, the boat was just getting really thrashed about. And one thing that happened was the cap here for this anchor chain blew off of there tons of salt water ended up going into that hole and into the anchor locker. During that storm, the anchor actually deployed a little bit. I had a safety line on it, which kept it from deploying too far, but it actually did deploy so much that it ended up dangling off the side and taking a big gouge out of the bow. You can see the paint and gel coat has been scraped right off down to the fiberglass. We heard the anchor banging on the hull, at which point I came up here and manhandled the thing and brought it back on board and then secured it with a line. And we came here and uh, put on the windlass and, uh, and it didn't work. So I was like, oh God, no. Here we are, I got like 80 feet of chain out and a 75 pound anchor out. If we can't get this fixed, then uh, 
means I'll have to bring it all up by hand. A uh, real muddy mess that would be. So, okay, let's go down below. <clears throat> Sorry the place is a mess, but we just started ripping everything apart to figure out this problem. Hi, Mo. Hi. <laughs> Going up into the bow of the boat. Turn on a light. Oh, I need a flashlight. Mo, do you have a flashlight? Thank you. Okay, so. There we go. These are great flashlights, by the way. Um, anyway. Now, up here, there's a windless motor with the big battery cables going to it. And then right here, ow, is the underside of the foot button for bringing the chain in. You see there are two white wires going off of it. We follow those white wires into lockers, down into the bilge, underneath the dinette table, and back into the engine room. And we finally came back here to the circuit breaker panel. And one of those wires went straight to the windless circuit breaker switch, which we tested, and it was working just fine. The other wire went to right here, this solenoid. We learned that that solenoid is for sending the current through the really big cable all the way up to the windless motor itself. And then we discovered that fuse. Popped it out, tested it, and found that it had blown. That fuse is connected to the solenoid for the windlass. I went to my fuses box and found that there were a few of them in the fuses box that you know came with the boat. I never knew what it was really for, um, but it matched that one. And we put it in, and now the windlass is working again. <laughs> <laughs> And we did like a high, double high Woo. five, like dance the jig, kiss on the bow sort of thing. So if anyone in those gigantic hotels is watching us, they got a little show. Yeah. So all in all, it was about three hours of tracing wires, uh, the thick cables and then the thin cables and uh, thin wires. Running up on deck, tapping the windlass. Tapping, tapping the windlass, coming back down, checking it with the multimeter. What I think happened was when we pushed off from Norfolk, we left the windlass switch on. We raised anchor and we got underway and we never turned off the windlass circuit breaker switch. Then we got out to sea and the cap broke off of the hole that the chain goes in and that let all this water come into the anchor locker, you know, salt water. And I think that somehow soaked the underside of the foot pedal for activating the windlass which opened up the circuit and activated the windlass and it pulled on the windlass and pulled on the windlass and the bowsprit roller held it in place didn't let the the motor pull it anymore but it probably tried for a while and I think that's what dislodged it so much so that it deployed an extra foot before the the line caught it and in the process, that must have blown the fuse. So I guess uh, the things that we've learned, number one, turn off the windlass switch before we go to sea. Number two, make sure that the cap on the hole that the chain goes through is not gonna fly off again and let water into the anchor locker, which would then soak the underside of the foot pedal. We'll have to, yeah. Oh yeah, we did this little <laughs> diagram as we're tracing the wires, you know, here's the motor, it's got the two thick black wires going to it. We found these thin wires that went to a plug on deck. I didn't even know what that plug was for, but now after reading the documentation on the windlass, I have discovered that that's for a remote switch that you can plug into it on deck. We don't have that remote switch, it didn't come with the boat. I X'd out that thing because that couldn't be the cause of the problem. And then here are the other two wires which we traced through the floorboards to the circuit breaker panel and that was a part of the process of figuring out what was going on. We did it! Yes. Woo! And as things are breaking, uh, the autopilot, the belt on the autopilot broke the other day. Yeah, well. And you had to replace that and then the fuse. Yep. That. So as things are breaking, I'm making a little list oh, great. of things to reorder spares. so that our spares are always replenished yeah. as we're using them. 
we looked at weather and uh, it's crappy tomorrow but uh, it's good on Tuesday the day after so we're planning on pushing off in the morning on Tuesday and uh, sailing offshore for I don't know 36 hours or more to New York City we won't have crew for this one just me and Mo hopefully she won't get seasick We're at anchor here and it's 6 in the morning. The sun just started to brighten things up and it's blowing 25 to 30 knots. So I'm up on anchor watch and you see this tugboat has just arrived on the scene and I believe he's trying to grab the white mooring that's like right behind me. See him going back and forth and back and forth. I'm on channel 16. He hasn't tried to hail me. I wonder if I'm in his way. He's got the engines to deal with this kind of stuff. Maybe he's sort of assessing that I'm going to be an issue for him if he grabs that mooring ball right behind me. Haven't dragged yet. We've got 75 feet of chain out, anchored in about 20 to 25 feet of water, so it's got enough scope for storm conditions, which I think this might qualify for. And now he's pushing on. I noticed there are other white mooring balls further ahead of me, so maybe he's choosing to get one of those. According to the weather forecast, this storm is not going to be short-lived. It's an all-day thing. And uh, I'm really wishing that we hadn't left that marina. Because now I'm going to be concerned about Dragon Anchor all day long. I also heard on the forecast that uh, some places are forecast to have a few feet of snow today. This is ugly and cold. Morning, sunshine. Hey there. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, anchor right over here and, and get Wi-Fi. That would be really awesome. Yeah, it's not really a... There you go. How's the depth looking? 15 feet. Caught some signals, but we're unable to connect over across the bridge and across the way, so maybe this will work. Well, 
15 feet right here. Feet, uh, 15 times 5 is 25, 2, 5, 7, 75. So it's a little more than you need, but with this current and the way we swing, maybe good, eh? Bye. Almost looks like laundry day on here, but really I'm just drying out all the clothes from sailing. What are you doing over there? Uh, uh, I'm... <laughs> you look like you're being attacked by the solar panel. This panel is now permanent. It's always going to be on this rail, unlike the other 12 that get stored in the dinghy. And that's pretty much because there isn't room to fit these last two in the dinghy. The idea before was that all of the solar panels would be in the dinghy and we'd want to put them on the rail just when we're at anchor and uh, try to make that as seamless and easy as possible. So I used these wing nuts because they were really easy to put on and take off by hand. But when we went to sea, two of the wing nuts actually undid themselves. And so I'm replacing them with lock nuts. And then we won't have to worry about them coming off at sea. So we were on the other side of the bridge for the last night or two. Now we're on this side. We have all of the casinos over in this area and then there are more casinos over in another section. They seem to travel in packs much like girls going to the bathroom. All right, that's it. Are you Let done? there be power! Right here. Thank you. It's a little freaky. The sun just came out as you said that. <laughs> Having five panels up is pretty cool. We've seen as much as like 25 amps coming in. Um, but uh, it's nothing compared to when we have all 15 uh, on the rails. We'll be glowing. We'll be glowing. When I got my first solar panel and I looked at the amp meter and saw power going into the batteries, I was like, wow. You know, it's not making any noise. It's free, it's forever, it's practically maintenance free. No run in the engine, no hooking up to shore power. Quiet. Quiet. It's actually been really nice going into all of these marinas and they're like, shore power? And we're all like, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Because it's expensive. I mean, $10 a day or $5 a day or, or $15 a day doesn't sound like that much, but it's an extra 300 or more oh, a month. For, for electricity in a marina, yeah. Yeah. I mean, $10 a, a day is a pretty fabulous cocktail. It's been years and years, and I still get the same sort of excitement when I look at the amp meter and I see the power coming in. Yeah. The, uh, the amps coming in. And the higher the number, the more exciting it is. Ooh la la. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I like the podcast because I can listen to it, but I can still really hear everything that's going on. Bacon and cheese. Oh, sleeping beauty. I've seen a couple of ships. Oh, two for several hours. The sunrise. Just magical. Security zone around Liberty Island. Is that the Statue of Liberty up there? Woohoo! We are here. I wonder if we'll pick up Wi-Fi out here. 